Astra is going to be a whole load of fun. We've got two really hot, drool-worthy cars. You can't see me grinning below this. And that's just it. The world is topsy-turvy. Everything is crazy. We're standing with masks, socially distanced. Sharper actually chose to drive this. And I chose to drive the C63. Shall we just let's, get in and drive? Let's just drive. begin with the fact that this is no direct comparison. It's just two different people with two different AMGs, each with its own unique character. And Shapur can be quite a character. However, let's dive into why we chose our cars and what each one brings to the table. So why exactly did I choose the C63? Well, for one, I think it's really practically sized. It does have those seats back there when I want to use them. You just have to access them through two doors instead of four. And talking about two door, this has that sexy coupe styling, which makes it look smoking hot. Don't think Renault car is going to be getting into the back seat of that car. I'm actually sure she's already driving and just having a ball. Now, the great thing about having this back seat in a car with this much performance and so much driving pleasure is that you can use it every day. I can be driven around in it, I can get my chauffeur to park it, I can run around, do my errands the whole day, work, go for meetings and then when I want to drive, sit there in the front and enjoy this car. And not only can I enjoy it, I can have my friends sitting in the back and that makes a huge difference, don't you think? Well, is the back seat a reason to choose these cars? That's questionable for me, at least. And why do people choose cars like this? Well, for me, it just is because it's this experience behind the wheel. It's these snug, sporty seats. It's that performance you get when you accelerate the way you're pushed back into your seat. And this sound! Absolutely smashing. What's exciting about it is the V8 under the hood that churns out a little less than the earlier C63S but the 476 horses under this hood are strong enough and the 650 NM of torque serves up enough whack to slap a smile across your face that will stay for a very long time after you leave the driver's seat. When we talk about performance, we have to mention that this is the fastest four-door around Germany's Nürburgring. Now you will say, what relevance does the Nürburgring, a circuit in Germany, have to a car? Well, there are two factors. One, for a car to be quick on the Nürburgring, especially a heavy car like this one, a four-door, it has to ride well because there are loads of bumps and if it doesn't ride well, it can't get a quick time. And the second thing is, again, for a big heavy car like this, agility is paramount. It has to have the ability to carve up corners like something half its weight. And that's why that Nürburgring time for this car is so important. Now I know the C63 has allegedly the same engine, but this one has 639 horsepower and enough torque to negate this weight. So when you put your foot down, that happens. It is really supercar level performance. The four-door GT's outright performance is just mesmerizing. AMG's twin-turbo V8 has arguably found its ideal home in this four-door GT. Just look at the stark performance numbers. A 0 to 100 in 3.55 seconds and a 0 to 200 in just 11.86 seconds. And these are our figures figures we got when we tested this car here in India. See what I mean by supercar performance? In contrast, the C63 takes 18 seconds to 200. 11 seconds versus 18. Now you be the judge of that. Now I'm sure Shapur is talking about power and number and figures, but the beauty about the C63 is that you can use all that power 
you know, it may be the smallest iteration of this V8 with the least power output in the AMG, but the way you can use this power and lay it all down, that's what's beautiful about it. That's what I mean. It's naughty, it's nice, it's full of spice. And this is probably the sharpest contrast between these cars. The way the C63 gives you the confidence to mess with it is quite gratifying. You can let your hair down without tying it into knots, if you know what I mean. Now, while I may be a complete hooligan with this car around corners, because that's the experience I like behind the wheel. There are others that may want to have the thrill but in a more controlled manner. And you know, with all the settings and the variations that you have over there, you can choose what you'd really like to do, whether you want to let the tail really come out and bite, whether you want the car to cut in with its electronics a little bit more and keep you solidly safe. And so the C63 really lets you feel like a complete hero while it still lets you be safe and solid. There are a host of electronics that let you play with the level of thrill factor that you want. And in the C63, you can toggle through preset drive programs from Slippery, Comfort, Sport and Sport Plus. Each one changing the characteristics of the engine, transmission and suspension, along with the exhaust sound to suit the mode. And with AMG Dynamics, you also get variable stages of torque distribution to the rear basic, advanced and pro modes. Keep the ESP on and it's rock solid, letting you push to the limit without even a flutter. Go overboard and you will feel the electronics cut in. However, switch the ESP off and there is the recipe for a whole lot of fun. The 9-speed with a wet clutch allows more spontaneous throttle responses and the multiple downshifts ensure a good whack of power whenever you need it. Now, so far it's been grins and thrills, but all this fun factor does have its downside. And that's the ride quality. It is hard and there's no other way to describe it. At low city speeds, it's still okay, but pick up the pace even slightly and it will translate the smallest of dimples in the road to your rear end. Now, in the 4-door, Shapur has a very different story to tell. Now let's talk comfort. I've put the suspension in the C mode of comfort and well, it really does drive like a regular Mercedes. Yes, of course, it is a bit stiffer. It is a fair amount stiffer, but it does round off the bumps pretty nicely. It doesn't thud through a lot of the bumps like that car does. And it actually is much more practical in our conditions. So pretty impressive on the right front. To counter the weight of the four-door GT, AMG has blended rear-biased four-wheel drive, four-wheel steering, torque vectoring and an e-diff. Things in fact come together so well, this four-door is really sweeter to drive than even the two-seat GT. In fact, the absence of roll or pitch for a heavy car is truly baffling. And what's great is that what movements occur are quickly checked. Now you want to enjoy the car, set it up for performance, turn the dial. And it has the ability to really kick up a storm. While Renuka spoke about the various modes like basic, advanced and pro, you can even have master here, and this varies the level of assistance the car gives you. And then when you get really confident with the car, you have this mode, drift, where it becomes only rear wheel drive. You can have just as much rear wheel drive fun in this car. Wow. This is just a thrill a minute.
And then what makes it all come together is that the steering has plenty of connect and feel. So you really do get a lot of confidence. Well, even in the C63, the steering is light enough for me to twirl it around in a quick U. But when I pick up the pace, it does make me feel directly connected to the road. Dives into corners with an agility that is thrilling. And, you know, that's what performance cars are all about. It's not just about outright acceleration. It's about the way they handle and the way they let you enjoy the power that they have. And this one lets you do just that. Time to pipe the adrenaline down and see what these cars have to offer. The C63 looks smashing in the coupe body style and the massive Pan Americana grille dominating the front, totally pull skin and the matte black just make it all the more awesome to look at. There are 18-inch wheels that are standard, but the ones that I have are the 19-inch wheels with 235-35 in front and 285-30 at the rear. The interiors are sporty and stylish as the exterior with an IWC analog clock that adorns the carbon fibre finish across the dash. A 10.25-inch touchscreen that comes with all the information you could ask for and more. The dials offer a multitude of displays, even down to things like G-Force. And the finish of the dash, the snug sports seats and the steering with touch control to adjust dynamics are all pretty cool. The four-door GT is only the third car to come out of AMG that's not based on an existing Mercedes. The four-door GT has a low slung profile that's unconventional to say the least. The unconventional nose looks good with the Pan Americana grille and the roof line flows nicely towards the rear. The stubby boot does look a bit uh, truncated, but with the big wing in the back, it does eventually work. The mix of carbon fiber, Napa leather, chrome, sophisticated mood lighting, the cabin is more Mercedes than AMG. The sporty racing seats, however, make the cabin feel different. Also clad in the highest quality leather, they are, however, cooled and can be adjusted to hold you in place. The seats, however, are a bit hard and not as comfortable as a regular Merc, but there is a fair amount of space in the rear. The seat back, however, is a bit upright and the center console takes up a lot of space. Well, both of these are a riot and both can pump your adrenaline. It all depends on your wallet though and whether you want those four doors and a larger back seat. The C63 costs 1.33 crore and for those rear seats and two more doors, of course more power and tech, you need to pay a crore plus more. What I like about the C is that I think it's perfectly sized for our conditions and boy does it deliver on thrill factor. The beauty of it is the way that it lets you enjoy all that it has to offer without making you wet your pants, which is what makes it so usable and enjoyable. Plus, there's the fact that there isn't anything quite like it around. In the absence of the BMW M4 and the Audi RS5, it doesn't have competition. So it's much more expensive and heavier. But the GT4 door still delivers performance the C63 can't match. It's just as agile and fun to drive. And then you get the added practicality of a four door and even a boot. Sure you don't want to swap Renuka? Think of all the extra space. <laughs>